it comes from above, yes, you shall be a source and avenue, a fountain that will not run dry, that no man can trace the source. I said, nobody can trace the source. You don't know understand? No man can trace the source. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the spirit of God. We must not conflict with the Holy Spirit. Brethren, as believers, as a church, we must not allow our feelings, our human senses to play around the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. We are going to pray tonight. Say, Lord, Open our eyes. If there's any veil that is contending with the leading of the Holy Spirit, deliver us, O oh God. When the Holy Spirit leads the church, you cannot operate in confusion. It could be covered and surrounded with so many controversies, no, that the Holy Spirit will lead you into the plan and purpose and the will of God. It will not make sense to any man that sees it. It will not add up to any man that tries to figure it out. Yes, but the Holy Spirit is at work. Father, we pray tonight. We ask, O oh God Almighty, that your prevailing power come upon the church. Lead us, O oh God. With the influence of the Holy Spirit. Let it have dominion over our minds and our thoughts. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God Almighty. For as many joining, wherever they are, anywhere in the world, I pray, O oh God, that this teaching of tonight will bring a change, a transformation that they have needed for long in the name of Jesus. Father, let somebody be transformed. You have a word for the church tonight. You have something that we need to know. Very important, oh God. I pray for listening ears. No one is a day that have ears. I pray, oh God, for those that have not, they be given ears to hear tonight in the name of Jesus. And give it a deep thought, a deep meditation. That nothing will take your soul for granted. Blessed be your name, oh God Almighty. Have your way, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, unveil your word. The food that you have for us tonight, release it to us as many here in this. Lord, I pray, oh God, that our eyes be open tonight, our understanding be open tonight, and you alone, oh God Almighty, be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Shout, Amen. Amen. Wherever you are tonight, please, I want you to have your pen and paper and open your heart to the Holy Spirit tonight. The, the essence of life itself, brethren, we need to understand the reason, the essence of life itself. It's not what you live on earth. The Bible says, if our hope if our hope, all that we just hope for, and we're running after things every day when we wake up, if it's of the things of this earth only, the word of God, that is God himself, is telling us that we are of all men most miserable. The earth we've occupied ourselves with so many things we try to do. From trying to get the food we want to eat, the kind of houses we want to stay, the kind of job we want to have, the kind of life we want to live. But there's one thing that matters the most, that is more important than anything, is that you are ready for eternity. 
brethren tonight and speaking on this topic which I believe is delicate to every church and every believer every man of God every woman of God every Christian anyone every believer who desire to enter the kingdom of heaven must hear this every believer who desires truly if the Lord blesses you with 500 years on earth it's nothing to eternity but if you miss this principle there will be surprises on that day tonight the Lord want to speak to us so you serve God in such a strategic way that you know you are ready and you will make it into his kingdom this is not something that one could put together or make up no these are the very words of Christ and so we will understand what we must run after and the things we should not run after because of a truth I pray the mystery of God be open unto us tonight because when all is said and done and all eyes is closed we are all the same there's no rich there's no poor there's no great there's no small there's no powerful there's no weak we are all the same when you finish on earth you are all the same but after you finish where you're heading to please pay attention tonight that doesn't mean you can't live a good life but there's something that you need to hear tonight are you with me we must be careful for those of us that have tested this salvation and we have come to Christ we must be careful what we run after we must be careful who we are calling our lips should be a product of the vision revelation of Jesus Christ in our heart our lips I'm saying this brethren must be a product of Christ revealed in our heart of the vision of who he is in our heart must matches what comes out from our lips the activities of our heart which should involve the meditation the observation and the meditation of the word of God day and night we erect altars that is the reason why on that day it's not going to be couples it's going to be individual it's not going to be family it's going to be individual there will be no room for argument there will be no room for dispute there will be no room for anyone saying this person made me i wanted to serve god like this but i i, I listened to this person and i decided to do it this way there is no room that is the reason why please you pay attention tonight don't validate yourself by what people call you don't validate yourself by what people think about you shall remain amen. Romans chapter 8 I'll begin from there before we go into our text tonight I just want to clear that to us Romans chapter 8 verse 16 Romans chapter 8 verse 16 please turn your Bibles tonight hallelujah if you are there shout amen please pay attention tonight Romans chapter these are, these are the words of God these are the scriptures it is very important that you desire the spirit of God in your heart it said, it said the spirit itself hallelujah the spirit itself beareth weakness with our spirit the spirit of God itself come in and bear weakness with your spirit that we are what the children of God 
a spirit comes inside you identify and bear witness with your spirit and helps you to know that you are a child of God this is not what somebody tells you oh I think you are a child of God the way you are acting I believe you are a child of God the way you are performing in church I know you are no there is something inside of you that comes with a brokenness selfless unworthiness unqualified to stand before God that helps you to know that you are a child of God not what the pastor ordain you not what the pastor calls you your title doesn't make you better than anybody else please pay attention tonight it is something of the spirit and that is the reason why John chapter 4 verse 23 and 24 he it says, it says the time has come and now it is that the true worshippers let's turn to John let's go to John tonight hallelujah John chapter 4 these scriptures will guide us into the point of what the Lord wants us to know tonight John chapter 4 23 he said by the hour coming and now is when the true worshippers which means there are false worshippers there are many that could worship God but the Lord knows those that are false are you falsely worshipping God you will know it in your heart because anything that people will applaud you and compliment you and tell you you are doing deep down within you you will know he said the hour has come and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such the father is seeking God is truly looking for if you are hearing me tonight we are all in service tonight and those joining us wherever you are you will know if you are seeking the father the father knows if you are seeking him anything you are doing for God with men's compliments looking for who sees you what people will say is fleshly seeking is false it's an eye service kind of worship Amen. the Lord said I'm looking for the heart he said I was I will find that heart he said not only the true worshipers worship the father in spirit he said the father is also seeking for them the father is looking for those that when they worship they see nobody around them you worship God in your commitment you worship God in your dedication you worship God in your offering you worship God in your service you worship God when nobody sees you the Lord is looking for also so tonight brethren I want you to open your heart to this teaching because we will see when the Lord addresses many who argue their way on earth they cannot argue their way through the gate of heaven why? because we're running after things that, th that we believe it impresses the kingdom because it has been validated by men turn your Bibles to Matthew Jesus speaking Matthew chapter 7 Oh, please, I beseech you tonight. May the spirit of focus come upon you tonight. 
undivided attention to grab hold of tonight's teaching in the name of Jesus. May your spirit man be open. I pray tonight for as many that the devil must have channeled their pathway to hell. This might reverse your way and channel it to the path of the kingdom of God. Verse 21 of Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Please hear this tonight. And it says, not everyone that said unto me this is jesus speaking not everyone that said unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven not everyone so who are those i am one of them that call him lord lord day and night we come to church we call him lord lord jesus help me lord jesus save me lord lord every time we call on him he said not everyone so what separates what creates the difference what could happen that those that call him lord lord could still end up not enter the kingdom he said but he that do it the will of my father which is in heaven he that do it not just to know the will not just to seek the will but you become a doer Amen. your life is not functioning in what God's will is not our will that is caught up in ourselves, in our pride in our thinking in our feelings in our thought and our ways no but the will of god is not man's ways the will of god is not man's thought the system of god that is way above and beyond us he said the doing the doers of the will of my father which is in heaven before we go to verse 22 please turn your bibles to John 3 I want to touch on something tonight John chapter 3 and this is going to be practical to our daily work and our Christians and as I'm speaking to you I'm speaking to myself that we might be conscious of our work with God be mindful of this kingdom work because unfortunately which is the truth of the kingdom the Bible says many shall be disappointed on the final day please let somebody read John chapter 3 verse 1 2 and 3 John chapter 3 verse 1 2 and 3 please pay close attention to the revelation of what I will speak tonight yes amen John 3 verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus listen to this brethren we, we're going to go through this in our Christian walk in our daily life but listen to this there was a man named nicodemus among the pharisees and he came to who a ruler of the jews he's a ruler of the jews of the jews verse 2 the same came to jesus by night he came to jesus by night please listen to what he's going to say please listen to it yes and said unto him rabbi rabbi we know that thou art a teacher rabbi teacher man of god a prop we know we know that you are what teacher you are a teacher yes continue that come from god that come from god we know you came from god no. we it is a i we know we're talking about it in our inner circle we're discussing it i'm coming to tell you by now but this is the discussion that is going on in our cabinet in our in our congress in our meetings that you a man from God go ahead for no man can do these miracles listen to this Jesus that thou doest except God he no man nobody this is our conclusion can do the things you are doing except you are from God except God be with such a man watch this verse 3 hold on before we go into verse 3 our human flesh our will we want to know more 
Who are those talking about me? So that is what the people think. So I am that is I am from God. That, that, see, see our the, the, the human will will desire more emphasis because it's an elevation of what we want where we are doing things and we want people to say yes finally they know I'm from God finally they, they, I think somebody's understanding listen to this brethren the will of the father Jesus. in the will of the father the validations of men are irrelevant. Please, I beg you tonight, if you must make heaven, you must run from it. Amen. If Jesus have allowed a wow, look at this man from the high, from the high position of the Pharisees is coming to tell me that this is what is going on. I've been trying to let them know I'm from God. You know, and now I have no idea this was what they're thinking. Jesus did not give no attention or emphasis of what they think. It was irrelevant to him whether they believe he is from God or not. Listen to me, brethren. If we must understand the pathway of the kingdom, if we must understand how to get rid of this weird thing that would have driven him to go out and continue to do more stuff why because the people are saying that i am from god by the things i am doing and he will begin to do things based on increasing that ability that performance but if you look at verse 3, Jesus careless who are the we. What did he say, verse 3? Verse 3. Jesus answered and said, Jesus, unto, yes, read on, please. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say verily, unto you, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born. Stop right there. Jesus focused and said, Listen, the answer that Jesus gave has nothing to do with what the man is saying. Are you listening to me? I am focused about you, what you need to enter the kingdom, not my doings. What is important is not my elevation by men saying I am from God and God is with me. What is important is what you need because I could be lifted in that level, but that is not helping you for the kingdom. What do you need you to enter the kingdom? Jesus was focused on what? The will of the Father. I came that men might enter the kingdom. Not men might validate what I am doing or what they think I am doing and yet not walking in the will of the Father which means by being what? Born again. Read on. Yes. Amen. Except a man be born again. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. He cannot see the kingdom. Read on. Yes. Verse 4. Verse 3. Yes. Except what? a man be born again Jesus was focused on him being born again what is needed you may be sitting what is needed for him to be born again not what he just said how many times have we fallen into that that we pay more emphasis a man from the congress came and told me what the senate are discussing that I am from God that they know I am from God. When you center that, you find yourself operating in the inner heart of iniquity. Jesus. And you will lose that man going back, never understanding the principle of what is needed for him to be born again. That takes us to chapter 22. Verse 22 of Matthew 7. Please, let's go back now. Please, I want us to get this teaching very well, brethren how we must do away with things that are outside the will of God that could jeopardize us entering the kingdom so that we operate the will of God even, if, even with the power that God has given us it has to be done with the will of God not because it's a performance and demonstration verse 22 please pay attention verse 22 of chapter 7 of the book of Matthew if you are joining us brethren 
believers every believer who desire to enter the kingdom of heaven must hear this many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name many we say to who not some many who are those many these are not unbelievers these are christians believers that think prophesying and performance is a validation to enter the kingdom so they are standing before christ said have we not prophesied in thy name you know what that means so let me in have we not what prophesied in the name any prophetic declaration outside the instructions and the direction of God is outside his will read further he said and in thy name which means they are telling me Christ what they have done in thy name cast out devils we cast out devils Jesus in your name and in thy name done many marvelous works Ay, Jesus brethren if you are hearing this tonight this is what the believers the present I believe our 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 concept of Christianity have been trapped into that God is using me to prophesy and so I have my ticket for heaven God is using me to cast out devils so I think I have access to heaven God is using me to do marvelous works. The Lord said, many will say this to me. But yet, they are operating outside the doings of my will. On that ground, yes, you did all that in my name. But I have something to tell you. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. How could Jesus respond to those who prophesy in his name? And if you look at this level of oppression, it is not just ordinary Christians, these are believers. Hear this, brethren. We must not narrow down the gospel. That even when we see a blind man or a lame man or a sick man, we are directing him to the pastor only. No, you that is directing him might be the healer, the one that God has given anointing to lay hands. To receive healing but the concept is that no I, I, we have not been qualified to do this because the doings is in the rank of the titles why should men and women bring the sick only to the pastors what happened to the believers they can't lay hands on the sick too so we're doing wondrous works and yet train no mentors for those works why the applause the glamour and the fame is attributed to us so when we now stand before him we are trying to say jesus i did this in your name this is verse 23 i don't know those that the lord said he will say this to but may this not be us I am talking to you brethren I plead with you that I don't know but these are not unbelievers these are not sinners these are people that understand the kingdom and yet the Lord said then will I profess unto them which means it's not one there are many I never knew you depart from me ye that walk iniquity depart from me do you know at that point there's no argument because we walk around with validations of power and signs and wonders and Lord have mercy all those prophesying the Lord called them irrelevant all those casting out devils we have casted devils out to the point that it has become a show and performance all those wondrous works that has made men lifted to be called all kind of names above what God has made them to be 
we forget one thing that the Lord is looking for a servant hey, Jesus. Holy Spirit help us Holy Spirit help us the Lord is looking for my good and faithful servant if you are hearing me tonight he's not looking for my good and faithful pastor he's not looking for my good and faithful anointed and powerful general we have placed some things into this kingdom work that have lifted men above the servant realm for the kingdom brethren look at verse 24 please before we go further may God move in our life today I say may God move this in our spirit and change the gospel and the body of Christ because there are many when I read this, read this scripture I marked it in my Bible he said many will come with the credentials of prophecies track record which are true credentials of casting demons credentials of doing wondrous works with big, big proof and the Lord says I don't know you I don't know you I never know you Lord in your name say yes but I never knew you <sighs> look at what he called it he walk iniquity you know what that means all this stuff was in your inside swelling your doings was in your swelling I didn't see my glory in any of them I have checked the account of where glory goes in the wondrous work of the saint and I didn't find no deposit from you. So it has made you bigger in the eyes of people. It has made you powerful in the eyes of people. It has made you some kind of God in the eyes of people. That people see you, they roll on the floor and you sit and you enjoy that worship and yet nothing is ascribed to I don't know you he said I am the Lord if you are hearing this tonight may the Lord help us not find ourselves in this state he said I am the Lord that is my name my glory I share with no man in any doings of the kingdom the glory goes to the father and I'm going to touch on Jesus if there's any prophet if there's any pastor if there's any leader of the kingdom that ever walk on the surface is our savior Jesus Christ and watch this turn your bibles to matthew 4 when he was in that state to demonstrate power it was not authorized under the will of god jesus did not do it so i speak to us tonight if you are hearing this for many that will find this surprise may the lord deliver us now before then please quickly matthew 4 verse 1 Please, I want to touch on the areas quickly. Please, verse 1, yes? Amen. Verse 1, then Jesus said, Jesus led up to the Spirit into wilderness. He was led up to the Spirit. Watch this. The Spirit led him up there in the wilderness to be what? To be tempted, tempted by the devil, yes? The devil. Verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, yes. he was afterward at hunger. He was hungry, brethren. Listen, 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry with the Spirit of God that led him there. But watch this verse 3 yes and when the tempter came into him does he said if thou be the son listen of god, to this if thou be the son of god command that command the stone be made. stop right there command this stone to be bread if thou be the son of god listen to me brethren jesus can do anything under the power that was handed over to him he is god himself which he could have said you want to know i'm the son of god yes stone become bread and the stone will become bread but under the will 
of the father to the glory of God he said no Jesus said no I rather I, I, I have no need to validate my sonship of who I am under the dispensation of turning stone to bread the power is there he refused his will because the will of the father is to live by what is written which is the word of God only hear this brethren the devil who knows very well Jesus could have done it but under the supervision of Satan asking for a validation he said no he said thou shalt not live by bread alone the power that God has given you is not for sure to many who have tasted begin to turn stone to bread and so many will stand on that day father I turned stone to bread I did great marvelous works in thy name he said I never knew you anything that is not consulted by the spirit to validate the will of God you are on your own I cast out devils Jesus he said yes because people were standing to see and you try to show the power in you without my supervision if we read to verse 10 on three times Jesus had the chance to show brethren we must be delivered from show if we enter the kingdom he had a chance to show it he let the devil know you are too small for me to cross the line and demonstrate even though I have it but yet it's not under God's word instruction brethren this was a deadly situation a very very delicate situation and yet Jesus did not make any move if you and I know we have that power how many will say Lord is it your will for me to do it if it's the will of God, the spirit that led him there, we have him punched stone to bread, not the Satan involving. Satan is full of pride, self, I, me, the world, glamour, show, performance, and people applaud. And when you walk, they point every two years. He did it. He has the power. He has the power. And Christ takes no glory. Three times, Jesus said no. I am speaking to us tonight. I'm going to read to verse 27. He said, therefore, whosoever, verse 24, read, hear this. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth this saying of mine, please, if you are hearing this tonight of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house and it will not it will and it fell not for it was what founded upon the word of God a solid rock no other foundation can a man build can a man lay than that which is laid which is who Jesus Christ the living word wait for him do you know how many times Jesus healed people and tell them don't don't tell anybody I did. Jesus will heal them and send them away and hide away from the healing. And the people say, I don't know who this person is. That glory might go to God. Amen. One thing I know, I was once blind, but now I can see who healed you. I don't know. Can healing take place in the body of Christ today that is not ascribed to anybody? so that Christ can be glorified brethren 
many prophesied may you not be among those that will prophesy and be rejected many casted devils out they, they, this jesus said many will say this to me i did marvelous wondrous work self will begin to create manipulations anointing will begin to create show and power and we won't even know when the devil is involved in the power and system and we think it's god at work Hear this tonight. Verse 25. He said, The rain descended and flooded, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth this saying of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which builded his house upon sand. Verse 27. The rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house. And it fell. And a great and was and great was the fall of it. Jesus said, He shall say unto them, Come into my rest, my good and faithful servant why should the Lord use the word faithful servant it is a coming to my rest my good and powerful servant my good and anointed servant where did you get the anointing from my good and great servant great bishop great reverend great past who made you great that great church how did you become great I was healed in that church I was delivered in that church where is Christ in the middle of the healing Jesus said I never knew you because actually in all that demonstration there was no relationship. Romans wonders for many who know him as God. But when it comes to glory, they never glorify him as God. Giving themselves to fables. Performance. This scripture is not talking about the world. It says many shall say this to me. Even to myself, God have mercy. If the glory is not unto God, if your preaching and your teaching is not in alliance with the will and what God has placed in you to tell them, the Lord said, I never knew you. You preaching what you think is good for the people to hear. Preach my will. Preach my will. Don't preach what they think. Or what you think they should hear preach the will that i put in your heart even on the road to calvary jesus had to denounce his will he said not my will because by my will this cup i could end it right here but your will is for the work to be finished brethren casting devils it's not a ticket to heaven. Prophesying like Elijah and, and, and Elisha is not a ticket. It doesn't validate your kingdom stand in God. Wondrous work is not a ticket. What is important is that you are operating in the will of God. None of this was done in my will because it is the doing of my will that we enter the kingdom. Brethren, turn your Bibles to Acts 16. The will of God, preachers, ministers, church, is to preach where the Lord wants you to preach. When the Lord wants you to preach. 
and what the Lord wants you to preach. Not everywhere you mount up without consulting the will of God. It becomes a business enterprise. If not, Jesus could have turned that stone to bread because he was hungry. It, it justified the reason. Not every justifiable reason is validated in the will of God. Hear this tonight. We must be careful. Acts chapter 16. Please turn your Bibles to Acts 16. I want us to look at the life of Paul. Paul that the man that wrote the epistles. The mentor of the gospel. Someone that demonstrates great example for the work. Verse 5. Acts chapter 16, verse 5. Please pay attention. Again, we are speaking on everything. Every believer who desires to enter the kingdom of heaven. These are things you must know. It is the doing of the will. And your will is not your feeling. Your will... God's will is not your feeling. God's will is not your emotion. God's will is subjecting to the leading of the spirit. And to everything that is done, he takes the glory. And you stay more small in his eyes. Acts chapter 16, I read from verse 5. And so the church established in the faith and increase in number daily please pay attention now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were, and were what forbidding of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia Paul was forbidding a man that wanted to preach so wherever you are called to preach seek God is it your will for me to go there and preach not because you carry the Bible you carry the word and you are called you are anointed most anointed most powerful your presence in this place will shake the whole place and you move because you have been lifted and validated by men and you are consigned if he says no many will be offended hear from our brother Paul the Holy Ghost forbidden Paul forbidding of the Holy Ghost to what? to preach the word was Paul not having the word with him? yes was Paul not a carrier of the gospel like us? yes but under the dispensation of the will of God Paul you cannot enter Asia not now and Paul have to respect the will of God yes by his will he wanted to go sorry man why he felt the people should hear the gospel we all desire people to hear the gospel we all desire to help and do things it's not every, every help is the will of God you can help a killer destroy you you can help somebody that will bring down things and destroy things it's not every help the help that is the will of God imagine the people in Asia Paul how be it you don't want to come and preach and even they could even say he's proud yes by the will of God I cannot come in the will of God you might offend many but stay in the will of God the doer of the will we enter the kingdom it is the faithfulness of the servant verse 7 after they were come to what? Mercia they are said to go into what? Bettinia is that your Bible? I'm reading verse 7 they were arraigned they were saying to go into what? but the spirit did what the spirit will lead you in the will of God he suffered them not to enter though 
don't go. How can this be happening? Zeal to preach. Zeal to minister the gospel. Zeal to go there and prophesy. Zeal to go there and cast out devils. Zeal to go there to do marvelous works. A demonstration. And none of us can be compared to the anointing of Paul. And yet, Paul humbly held himself back. And said, the spirit says no. The power I carry is not mine. I have to use it under the leading of the Spirit to fulfill the will of the Father. Brethren, this is an example of the church. Verse 8. As they passed through Messia, they were still going, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Oh, brethren, by vision and revelation, the Lord will make known to you the mystery of His will and the things you must do. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Verse 10. And after he heard, he had seen the vision, immediately was what? Endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord the will of the Lord the will of God has called us to do what? to preach the gospel unto them he's not discriminating against the other two he's just walking in the will of God are you getting something today? and to so many that will say I must go they need to be saved they will come on that day and say, Lord, I was where? I was in Bethany preaching. I was in Messia preaching. And I also went to Macedonia preaching. The Lord said, I knew you not. Lord, wondrous things was done. When I was in Bethany, I casted out devils. Yes. I healed the sick in your name. Yes. I even raised the dead in your name. Yes. I prophesied. Yes. I never knew you. Your actions were not working in alliance with my will. The Spirit of God that has been called to lead the church must guide us in the will of God. Brethren, by understanding Paul knew my going to Macedonia is not in my own will but the will of God that when he finishes he's able to stand and receive that call and say come my good and faithful servant brethren the day of the kingdom many will try because you have been validated by men and compliment and title and call the best of the best but before Christ where do you stand in his will this is something we must hear the painful thing is to face and go into eternity with the rejection of the master the savior and all that we think we lead us by all these prophecies and, and, and performance and casting devils raising us to think that is what God wants us to do brethren if it's not done under the leading of the Holy Spirit in conformity with his will it will lead to rejection on the final day this is not to unbelievers he said, many will come to tell me this. Why? They come with the credentials of works, yet outside the will. <laughs> Quickly, Luke chapter 10. Before Jesus left, he warned us. This message must not go empty. 
must save a soul if it's one person if it's one brother one sister one elder one pastor that will receive this and said as from this day i will operate my assignment under the will of god all it is one to say no my life will not end up the bible didn't say one came the bible said many shall come which means there are many that are operating christian life in that standard pulling crowd don't forget when you stand before the lord on that day there will be no crowd <laughs> all those that employ you there's nothing wrong to put hands together and give applause then when your heart is not channeling that applause to jesus somebody is furious he's a jealous god there's nothing wrong in putting your hands and clapping then if your heart is not redirecting that clapping to the lord our savior jesus christ the only one who died and rose again do you know what that means that's where you clap clap on the resurrection don't clap on the one that is resurrected for put your hands together when that applause come by the things taking place remember the one who died and rose Luke chapter 10 this happened to the disciples Luke chapter 10 verse 17 please pay attention tonight these are the things no matter what you are doing please I beg you let the will of God prevail He said, it's the doers of the will that we enter the kingdom. Not the prophecies and the wondrous work and the casting out demons outside the will. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. Pay attention. With joy saying, Lord, even the devil has subject unto us through thy name. You know. Imagine we go out and Go out and evangelize and you see in the name of Jesus, come out and you see the devil rolling on the floor. Wow, you feel thrilled. You can't wait to get to work the next day. And walk around to your desk. Uh, I put a discussion now. Our church went out yesterday and I was casting out devils, you know. You do? Yes. If you have anyone, bring them out, take care of them. You finish. Shout amen. <laughs> you cast out devils. Then you have no idea your boss is a devil that is looking at you from the window right shout amen they came back rejoicing telling jesus we can't believe this in your name the devil were casting out but look at jesus verse 18 and he said unto them let's read that together he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven 19 behold i gave you unto you power to do this to tread on what serpent and scorpion and over the powers what of the enemy and notice that my enemies hurt you but verse 22 verse 20 he said never but notwithstanding is that in your bible notwithstanding in this rejoice not notwithstanding all this and we pray every day lord you gave us power to tread on. yes but notwithstanding don't find a sweetness in your heart because you cast that devil don't validate your level of spiritualism because you cast that devil you prophesied you saw vision you spoke into people's life the things that nobody ever knew and the crowd are screaming wow how did he know he must be an extraordinary man and you're walking around puffed up he said rejoice not he said but notwithstanding in this rejoice not that what the spirit are what subject unto you is that in your bible he said don't rejoice your rejoicing places you outside the wheel your rejoicing places you outside what the will your rejoicing places you where among those cast away 
your rejoicing places you where in self gratification he said but rather rejoice something that you must rejoice about that in the will of God your name is written in the book of life that is what is more important to you because the devil you casted out yesterday is gone where do you stand in the will period your name is what written in the book of life brethren if you are hearing me tonight I speak to you with all sincerity of heart that not just you hearing this message I am also listening that we do not find our name among that many and I want to say amen to that who will stand and try to discuss what they have done don't you know what you have done is needless hear this Lord I casted out I prophesied in your name what have you done that he didn't know who try to remind me what you've done I have all the track I know all those that have done this in my name that are in my will you are not a monk you are trying to tell the Lord you've done marvelous marvelous works you are trying to tell the Lord you've casted out devils is there anything that is done that the Lord doesn't know he know it all he said I know them that are mine by the spirit bearing witness you think those are the things that will say oh welcome by casting devils and marvelous works I don't find you among them you are among those I don't even know he said I never knew you he will say this to many so which many are carrying these credentials and they believe that's what will validate them into the kingdom the Lord is saying to us today doing the kingdom work doing his will is what brings the validation not the performance he said many will come one will finish another one will come Lord I did this in your name no I did this in your name no the Lord knows those that are truly laboring final verse tonight first Corinthians as you are hearing this teaching tonight I want you to pray that your life your walk with God we will not end up in that category of those because the Bible says many are on that road who have been made to believe that's what the kingdom is all about no 1 Corinthians chapter 9 1 Corinthians chapter 9 the last verse 27 go there right now and we're going to be praying 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 he said but I keep under my body but I keep under my body I bring it what into what subjection bring your flesh yourself your I your ego your performance your offering your donation whether you are giving the best in church or you are not giving the best let nobody know what you do keep your body bring it into what subjection less that by any means by any means when I have preached to others I myself should not be what a castaway after you have what preach to others sing to others teach others evangelize to others witness to others do all the service in the house of the Lord he said bring yourself under the will of God humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Keep yourself subjection. If you must enter the kingdom. That's what makes the Lord to know you. 
he said that I might not end up be what should be what a cast away after I have preached to others do you I pray you we understand this tonight which means many that will be told I never knew you many that will be told depart from me ye worker of iniquity have preached to others but the end is a castaway it is not your prophecy it's not your casting the demons out it is your doing the will of God it is you doing it under the supervision of heaven not under the supervision of the devil not dragging the people out and let it be a, 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 a spectacle and when the demon is casted out all the glory is ascribed to your name and it's added as one of what your, your, your points of performance and say Lord I did this in your name he said it is the doer of my will stand on your feet tonight you're going to pray one prayer tonight let me not be a castaway you will not serve God all the days of your life Sunday service you are there Sunday school you are there Wednesday study you are there prayer line you are there all night prayer you are there choir you are there women ministry you are there men's ministry you are there evangelizing you are there you are burning yourself and at the end may you not be a castaway I said may you not be a castaway in the name of Jesus we go to pray say Lord let all be done according to your will let it be done under your instruction under your guidance under your supervision let my will play no role let our ways play no role let our thought play no role no matter how zealous we are to go out there and preach lord let the spirit lead us where we should and we should not what to say and what not to say what to do and what not to do not because we have it to do it but because you instructed us lift up your voice tonight lord let us not be a castaway if you are hearing this tonight pray for your pastors pray for the church pray for brethren the bible says many who are prophesying right now things casting out devils things doing marvelous work think that that is what they will say before Christ it says I will tell them I don't know them get into the will of God Lord what I am doing is it according to your will Lord Jesus I want to do your will not my will Lord and that was how Paul got himself and said not my will no more I it is you Christ by your spirit leave it in me please we must pray let it not be a surprise when the Lord says I don't know you say Lord I go to church and say I don't know you that's what he said he says that we say this to many who we come trying to enter he said I know you not he actually said you walk us of iniquity which means the things of your heart that are not right deep down may that not be your reward that is the reason why your labor the, the devil could make us do anything and, and perform at the end he knows when he begins to corrupt and contaminate defy and shift the things that God wants us to do then we mess up with feeling emotions touching thinking we drift from the wheel not my will Lord Jesus said if it's possible but not my will not my will but thy will be done should I go or should I not the Bible said the Holy Ghost forbid Paul 
How many people has the Holy Ghost forbidden not to go and preach? They still go and preach. I must go and preach. The people are waiting. I must go and preach. How, how can I tell them no? Look at the poster they have printed already. They come in. Powerful anointed man of God is coming. And the Lord said, Don't go. Said, no, I rebuke. You begin to rebuke the voice of God. Because when you mark the stage, the people are shouting. The Lord said, you are no more in my will. Two cities. Is there any one of us that can compare our anointing to the anointing of Paul? And yet, Paul humbled himself to say, yes, I will not go. He forbidden him to go. He suffered in the second city to go. Keep going. But by vision, the Lord said, yes, there's the place to go. The will of God has seasons. The will of God has strategic places. Please, I pray tonight. There are many that go from city to city and city to city and you get defied and corrupted and get tangled in things and the Lord says, you're on your own. Yes, you are preaching the gospel. Yes, it looks like things are happening. But I never knew you. Turning stone to bread, feeding your belly, because the anointing is now for your belly, not for my purpose anymore. Let us not be a castaway. Paul says this: I bring myself under subjection. If we must function in the will of God, we must bring ourselves under the subjection of the leading of the Holy Spirit. He will never lead you outside the will of God. He will never guide you outside the will of God. He will direct you. Your labor will not be in vain. I am talking to brethren tonight. That what bother my spirit, I, I pray, oh God. He said, many will tell me this. They will outline the things that they have done. He said, but this will be my answer to them. I never know. Actually, you are a worker of iniquity. It's a damnation to say, get that from my sight. Eternal damnation. With all your credentials. With all that is attached to your name. The biggest giver, the biggest donor in church. And yet not in the will of God. May the hand of God deliver us. May the mercy of God prevail and with the spirit of God guide us that we end up not be a castaway in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, bring us into your will. Prayer tonight, Heavenly Father, bring us into your will. This is a scary message, but I pray that we subject ourselves. Eternity is not one day. Eternal domination is not five months. It's not ten times of the years you lived on earth. It's eternity, endless, forever. No wonder Paul said, I bring my body. I bring my body myself under subjection. It has to be your will. Only your will. Not mine, oh God. That we end up called faithful servant. All that you need, welcome my good and faithful servant. Jesus. A servant that, that gives up his own opinion or idea about how things should be done, but yet subject to the master. The Jesus. My good and faithful servant. A servant that will not utter the message to suit those he's delivering them to. A servant that will not look at their faces but speak the word of the master. He said, the doers we enter the kingdom. Father, we pray tonight that anything that will drift us away from your will it comes through man's compliments. 
it come through man's fame and applause the insight sweetness that is irrelevant that we begin to see ourselves above what God has made us to be I pray for as many hearing this today that this message will turn us and remove us from that number because many believe that's what the kingdom is about hear this today the kingdom is about the doing the will Amen. to enter in thank you heavenly father blessed be your name O god almighty let your word O god gain entrance and that entrance grant light illuminate also god Amen. our understanding in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Exodus chapter 14 verse 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. God bless you.